Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. I'm Naga Manchetti. On today's programme, a model of multi-faith democracy, David Cameron's parting vision for Britain. One week after Brexit, with racist abuse on the increase, can religions stand together while the Mayor of London thinks they can? There will always be differences, and the point is you could amplify the differences, or you can focus on what things you've got in common. The Pope says Christians should seek forgiveness from gay people, but as people celebrate their sexuality, we ask, what does that mean for the church's traditional stance on homosexuality? Have religions changed their tune on what's been a divisive issue? Blockbuster author Frederick Forsyth tells Nicky Bady why he's become a poet to pay tribute to the soldiers who fell at the Somme. Well, I've, I've been to, the, um, to the, 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 the killing fields of Flanders, and there's I mean, seemingly endless fields of little white stones that mark where they now lie. And I think it scars you when you, uh, when you see all that. We'll be looking for your views on our debates too, of course. Now, here's a talking point. Should women have to wear these for work? Nicola Thorpe was told to wear heels or leave. She tells us why sexist dress codes need a dressing down. And Tommy has been out and about to sample your views. I personally really like to look smart, but that, to me that doesn't mean I have to wear heels. But I do have about four pairs of heels under my desk. Our guests are here ready to discuss those issues and Tommy Sandu is back here as well. He can share your thoughts with us. Flat shoes on today. <laughs> Flats for the show. Thank you, Naga. Morning. Yes, we want you to get in touch and be a part of the show. Lots of different ways to get in contact. You can, of course, contact us by Facebook and Twitter. And if you are tweeting, don't forget to use the hashtag BBCSML. <clears throat> you can also call us on our number 03030 Standard Geographic. Traffic charges from landlines and mobiles will, of course, apply. Text us 81771 and text will be charged at your standard message rate. You can email us. It's sundaymorninglive at bbc.co.uk. So lots of ways to get in touch. Please do. Thank you, Naga. No excuse not to get in touch. Thanks, Tommy. Let's meet our guests this week. Rabbi Laura Jana Klausner is Senior Rabbi to Reform Judaism. Tariq Ramadan is Professor of Contemporary Islamic Studies at Oxford University. Andrea Minichiello is, Williams is a lawyer and the director of Christian Concern for Our Nation. And Pastor Clement Okusi is the lead pastor of Eternity Church in Croydon. Welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us. What a week in politics it's been, eh? Hey? Uh, in the midst of it all, David Cameron repeated his mantra that despite its imperfections, Britain is one of the most successful multi-race, multi-faith, multi-ethnic democracies anywhere on earth. But with a reported five-fold rise in racist attacks and Brexit being blamed for the unleashing of a new kind of vitriol on migrants and minorities, does the Prime Minister's acclamation stand up to scrutiny? And is that model of multi-faith democracy a reachable reality or a far-fetched fantasy? Well, Sadiq Khan, Muslim mayor of London, the UK's most cosmopolitan city, has been using Ramadan to reinforce religious tolerance and togetherness. We joined him as he broke fast at a synagogue with a difference. You wouldn't expect to hear a Muslim call to prayer in a place of Jewish worship. But at Finchley Reform Synagogue in London, it's part of their effort to promote interfaith unity. It's easier to hear the voice of mistrust than it is to hear the voice that says, it's going to be OK, we just need to work hard, we can do this together. So we're going to begin... Rabbi Miriam Berger and the synagogue have been hosting Muslims from Somalia since their nearby community centre was burned down in an arson attack three years ago. We're helping the uh, Somali Bravanese community celebrate their month of Ramadan and we're helping them do that by opening the doors to our synagogue and giving them uh, an opportunity to be able to come together as a community. Um, and really, in return, we're able to get to know each other. It's really been an experience of knowing that we have far more in common uh, than we do those differences. This evening... Muslims and Jews together are marking Ramadan by observing iftar, the breaking of Islamic fast. Sorry, how are you? And they have a special guest, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. 
Begin with the greeting of peace, uh, Shalom. Shalom. alaikum. The mayor is full of praise for the display of unity shown by the Jewish and Muslim communities in Finchley. And Martin Luther King, not a Jew, not a Muslim, but a Christian, uh, said, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can. Tell me where. Sharing a meal together that people here believe is a good way of sharing experiences, breaking down barriers between faiths whilst retaining their own culture and individuality. There will always be differences, and the point is you can amplify the differences or you can focus on what things you've got in common. And what's really important is if we want to live together peacefully, harmoniously, but also with respect, uh, then we get on with each other and we build bridges rather than, you know, building walls. And it's really important that we recognise that in London we've got a great, great thing going on. We've got uh, people from different backgrounds, not simply tolerating each other, but respecting, embracing and celebrating, but we can never, ever be complacent. <laughs> Khan there appealing for togetherness. So our first question this week is, is Britain a model of multi-faith democracy? Well, joining us for this debate down the line from our Birmingham studio also is Alicia Kaczmarek of the Polish Expats Association. Welcome, Alicia. First, Tarika, I'd like to put the first question to you. We heard there from Sadiq Khan, building bridges, not walls. The question of what is a multi-faith democracy? Um, we saw Muslims breaking fast with Jews in the synagogue. Is that it? Is that an example of this multi-faith democracy? Yes, this is a, a, a great example, and you have lots of such examples in, in, in Britain today. At the grassroots level, at the local level, lots of people are doing this, and this is very important. Now, when it comes to a model, it's not only to respect each other and to eat together. The point is that if we really want a pluralistic society, it's not only to live together, it's to work together, it's to be together. It's much more than what we are doing. And sometimes, you know, Cameron is just saying this now, and sometimes he had contradictory statements about pluralism in our society. When he said, for example, that integration, that we have to, to talk more about Britishness just after crisis, it's very important for us to have a policy and to have a vision which is helping the people to come together. So this is something which is very important. Equal rights for all, but uh, acknowledging the fact that religious organizations can bring something to the, to the civil society and come together out of solidarity and justice and mutual respect. Andrew, let me get a view from you. Um, you're, you're committed to the idea that Britain is a Christian country. Um, does that mean then you cannot welcome new faiths to be part of a British society? Well, I think quite the contrary. I think that what's uh, happened and the reason why Britain itself is a model of democracy is because of its great Christian roots, uh, rooted very deeply in biblical thought and biblical precepts, which... Uh, brings a great welcome and a great hospitality to all. Any great democracy of modern civilization has been based on Christianity. It's been based on the Bible, which welcomes, welcomes all. Um, but that is... Um, and in fact, the more that you get lots of different views competing in the space and not one understanding of a culture, then sometimes there, there becomes more increasing chaos in the, in, in the public uh, discourse. And in fact, if you look at other countries across the globe, um, if we were, for instance, um, to look at Islamic nations, um, there, there isn't the kind of freedom... Mm -hmm that you would find uh, that the Christians give here, that, the Christian, right. that our Christian heritage has given uh, to all faiths and none in this place. Pastor, I see you nod nodding, but um, uh, Rabbi Laura, your reaction to that, the idea that we are a, a Christian nation, how does that make you feel as a Jew? Well, historically, when Jews have lived amongst Christians and Muslims, it's actually been Islamic societies who have been much more tolerant because Christianity has a very defined mission to convert, um, and that's at the end of our, the Gospels. So I am uncomfortable, very uncomfortable with what you said. I don't think it recognises truth for its own sake, which each religious or not religious group brings. I think that there is an extra agenda of conversion that really concerns me in what you're saying. I think the problem is that um, the idea of multi-faith and multicultural tries to say that every idea is that's somehow right. equal and is equally freeing of all people. But actually, that's not the case. Islam 
Judaism, Christianity say something very different about the truth, as does uh, secularism. It says there is no God. So actually, if we think about that, not everything can be true. Um, you know, modern society, we may want to say there is no truth except the truth that there is no truth, or we're all <laughs> clamouring for our own truth. But that doesn't um, negate the fact that we can all get along with, oh, our, with our, and rub along together oh, with our different this views. Is, this is completely, absolutely um, and, and Pastor Clement, obviously, you, you're in a society in Croydon, in, in south, south of London, very multi-faith right. um, society there. Um, how does this reflect with, with the work you do there? Well, I mean, um, Britain, I would agree that Britain is a Christian nation. And, uh, you know, we use the word democracy. And I think in democracy is this idea of majority rule. The majority of people in Britain still identify themselves as Christians. We can argue about the figures it being declining. And I think there's a growing sense that Christians are feeling that their views and their historical beliefs are being marginalised. And that's causing tension. And I think uh, there is a challenge, because when we say multi-faith, is that at the expense of the host nation's culture and belief system. We are a Christian country. There's churches everywhere. Uh, when, the, when royalty want to have, have a wedding, it's a great big um, Church of England affair. Uh, the, the Queen is the head of the Church of England. Uh, Christians, it's a Christian faith that has allowed other cultures and welcomed other cultures, including my own family's culture, to come into this country in the 60s and have freedom and live a better lifestyle. The point, I suppose, of this discussion, sorry to interrupt sorry. you, is that we're talking about how comfortable people feel and if we are a multi-faith society. I want to bring in um, Alicia um, who's um, in Birmingham with us at the moment and Alicia I want to hear your story. You, you've ca you came to, the, to uh, this country 11 years ago from Poland and yes. we've been talking about tension perhaps that has mm. arisen and um, Pastor you mentioned that and how we, we get along in a multi-faith society. What are your impressions? Well, um, I think um, um, Britain can uh, is it, it's a very good example of a multi-faith and a multicultural country. There is um, uh, so many different communities, and and they are working together, and especially on a grassroots, uh, grassroots level. Uh, uh, there are many many examples of um, of this cooperation, and um, I do understand that there are. Um, religious differences, uh, as it has been said, um, but it doesn't mean that people cannot work uh, together or cannot exist together um, um, and plan the future and be involved in a democratic process together. Alicia, do you feel comfortable here, particularly in light we were talking in light of Brexit? We've seen a Hope Not Hate organisation, the anti-fascist organisation, um, making moves to try to bring communities together. Have you had any experiences that have perhaps made you feel uncomfortable of late? Uh, well, it it feels a bit different since uh, since we've got um, results of the referendum. Um, uh, we had uh, we had some um, um, hate speech and and very negative comments on uh, on my organisation I'm working for, um, uh, Twitter and, and Facebook accounts. Uh, they were um, um, it was just a few um, a few incidents, but it, it is worrying what we hear from um, from the rest of the country. The incidents. Uh, uh, which happened in Cambridge, London, um, uh, and, and other places when, when there was more significant attacks, when uh, people received notes, uh, when there was uh, graffiti uh, over the building. So that's uh, that's what I found uh, very unsettling and uh, uh, and just showing that it's it's, um, it's uh, something changed since the referendum. Rabbi Laura, um, a poll conducted this week by the Jewish Chronicle says that more than a third of Jews feel less safe after the referendum. Is this something you're identifying with and listening to what Alicia has just said? Well, I don't think it's just about Jews at all. I think that how we are as a country is very concerning. And when we had the riots, there was a report afterwards called Parallel Lies by Ted Castle. It was in 2001. And now he is saying that we are far more fragmented and separate and parallel society than we used to be. And what the vote did, what the referendum did, is put a very sharp light on that. And what's happening at the moment is you have these two things. One is, is showing fragmentation that exists and a political vacuum. And I'm very concerned about that at the moment. And it's the place for leaders of, of all faiths and none to set a vision for what kind of Britain we want. A strong, multicultural, where we don't welcome 
diversity, but we benefit from it. We love it. You've mentioned leaders of faith. Sorry, um, you've mentioned leaders of faith. What about politicians, Tariq? Do they have a responsibility to ensure that we are cohesive as a society? Yes, of course. But the, the point which is very important is to get this trust between the politicians and the religious people to come together and to understand that this is a shared responsibility. And this is why I want to respond to what you said, because I think it's very important. If you start by saying it's because it's a Christian country that we are open minded and look at the Muslim majority countries they are not and we essentialize religion no that's not true in history Christian you know uh, uh, countries were sometimes colonizing and, and and Christianity was used what is important for us when we come together is to be self-critical to look at our own history to look at our own people and to understand that we have among us people who are not tolerant people after brexit telling for example it happened to me three, three days ago telling me go back home so you say, oh, what's that? What, what is happening? So if we don't come together, being self-critical about our own religious tradition and come to the other, to find in the other religions people who are ready for us to build a pluralistic society, it doesn't mean that I'm undermining your faith. No. I'm adding to it. I'm okay. helping you to be a better Christian. It's not so much about uh, the un undermining of faith. It's actually about the pursuit of truth. And something, uh, and in, in the public discourse and in our history, in our nation, when we've seen uh, the poor disenfranchised in the uh, 17th and 18th centuries, then we've seen uh, great reformers such as Wesley and Whitfield, uh, um, Wilberforce, come, come forward and actually as a result of giving the people back the Bible, knowledge of the Bible, I believe that part of the problem in Great Britain today is that we haven't encountered uh, We've, we've lost the Jesus, but, who, uh, who was the most compassionate person that ever lived. That, that's fine, and but actually you, know, brings... you know what? A multi-faith society is where my presence is helping you to know better your religion. So this is where this, in, this and discussion... And you're welcome here, and you're very, very I'm welcome. welcome. Oh, we, might be, see, we might be at home. Of course you're, you're welcome. Please, please, please. As you use the word welcome. I think let's talk to Alicia and yes. ask her that question. Alicia, do you still feel welcome here? <laughs> well, um, uh, yes, I think so. The, um, um, the, the, the first reaction was, uh, and, and, and the first um, uh, what we hear, uh, what we heard after the, uh, the results was uh, was very negative. I had so many so many negative comments about uh, uh, people uh, basically saying uh, uh, you need to now park uh, and, and, and go home, or uh, we were, um, 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 people saying that um, they want to leave the EU clearly because it's mainly because of the migration and they, they don't want EU migrants here. So, um, uh, so it, it, it did make me feel unwelcome. Uh, but uh, during this week I also received a really big number of uh, positive messages and emails and even cards from people who uh, wanted to say that, um, uh, uh, just w wanted to let us know and let me know that uh, not everyone thinks that um, uh, that's only the minorities, only um, um, a few examples of, uh, of the hate speech that majority of Britain uh, actually supports migration and they welcome migrants and and um, they want migrants to stay here and, yeah. and they, they they find it uh, beneficial to the country so that's um um, uh, that's the other side of uh, what has uh, what happened since the referendum. There is lo lots of negative, but also lots of mm, positive comments. Mm. But uh, in, in uh, it's it's still early days, and uh, and we are very anxious, and uh, we kind of waiting uh, to see whether those um, um, uh, those incidents were uh, just in the beginning, just the first reaction, or is it the beginning of something which will which will stay? Indeed. Okay, uh, Alicia, thank you. Um, and unsurprisingly you've been reacting to this conversation. Our viewers have been sending their tweets and their texts on this, and Tommy's been taking a look at some of those reactions. Tommy? Yeah, Naga, in general, people are sort of saying that they like the idea of a multi-faith society, but they're just worried whether we can all accept each other's differences. Susan saying, as a nation, I believe in welcoming others and being good to the neighbours. Uh, most intelligent, reasonable, normal people want to promote unity. So that's the ideal scenario. Answers in Books on Twitter says, a secular society and government is the model for all faiths and none uh, to work together for the common cause. Lee on Facebook saying, the problem is multiculture. A community needs a single culture. Diversity breeds fragmentation, not cohesion. And Elizabeth is saying the key to communities coexisting is the acceptance of difference in recognition of our similarities. So coming together despite the differences. And um, finally, Tess saying, I think there are enough similarities that we can have in a cohesive society if we all want to. The problem is 
some people just don't want to nagger. Mm, so many uh, interesting views. I was just taking notes. Um, Pastor Clement, uh, the, one of the tweets there, problem is a multicultural society. Um, another saying a secular society is the answer. Well, um, I wanted to comment about some of the racism that has come up since the Brexit. You know, I was born in this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, whilst we're not trying to play down the racism that has been uh, perpetrated today, that's a far cry from the racism I suffered in the East End of London growing up. And so, uh, and so I think we are certainly more cohesive and more welcoming than we have been in the last 30 or 40 years. I suppose the problem is, though... Um 331 hate crimes were reported to the police this week. That compares sure. to a weekly average of 63. And what we're talking about is how this feeling, sure. whether it's more have been reported or whether there's a feeling now that people are feeling isolated and, and picked Well, up. I don't see that in Croydon. Croydon's very multicultural. I don't sense that on the streets. I'm on, I'm on the streets quite regularly talking to people one and one. I mean, we've got to realise this um, uh, recent uh, vote we had, 70% turned out to vote for it. I believe there was over 30 million um, people that voted, that took part in it. So even the figures that are important are being reported are a small percentage of the overall figure. And I think we've got to be careful how we report those statistics because it seems that a, a lot of the problem has been caused by the media's reporting okay. of well, Brexit. Let me show you a photo. Wanna... Let me show you a photo. Um, an NHS photo here um, of a theatre staff. And um, what we're showing in this photo, it was titled We Are Europe. It shows some scrub nurses from Spain, an Irish radiographer, a German consultant, anaesthetist, etc., etc. Many are from different faiths, different cultures. Awesome coming together. Um, Andrea, why do you think this has had to be displayed? Why has this had to be published well, well, I now? Think, well, I think we celebrate that. Don't we? We, we celebrate yeah. Great Britain. I'm half Italian. My father came over in the 1960s. I, I, I love... I'm very... I love being British and Italian, and I love the mix of cultures, and I love the welcome. And it is this nation. It, it, it just, just because um, whether you voted for Leave or for Remain, um, if you love our nation, you believe in uh, the the freedom, non-coercion yeah. of people. That's what's made us great. That's what's given us great opportunity. I thank God for that opportunity. I mean, I, I'm probably sitting on this sofa because I was a little girl born to an Italian waiter, um, got the opportunity to go to a grammar school and pursue my dream of becoming a lawyer. So are we celebrating at the moment? We, we, we should celebrate, I think, but at the same time, we have to be very cautious with what is happening, what, what, just the figures that you... And we have to take this very seriously. Yeah. It means that after the... the, the, the the vote, what we have is people revealing uh, feelings that sure. are, you know, we are scared. I think it's the poor so, that feel but very one, one point that you said, if I, if I may, dispossessed. you know, you know what? The starting point of us living together is not to tell me or to tell the people you are welcome. They are at home. They are British they are Muslims. They are British British people. Can you imagine that if I turned turn to you, yeah, yeah, Angela, and said to you what you just said? You're welcome here, Angela. Well, and we're all welcome, welcome, Andrea. We're sorry. All welcome. You are. Hang on, I haven't finished. You're welcome here. Come to my house for a cup of tea and then please go. It's a thing of power when you are able, in the Christian space that you define, to say you're welcome here. Because what you're saying is you have more power and we are welcome to come in as guests and leave as guests. And I think there's something no, very concerning in it. Every country and must I also have want a host say... culture. Every country must have a host. When I travel overseas, I've travelled all over the world. I, ex I accept and respect the culture which I'm going into. But, but, and I go to the Middle East. But things are moving. you just say the uh, culture. That's there is a host culture. have a the culture. And also, when you talk well, about not every Croydon, culture is the same. It what we be. saw in uh, the <sighs> referendum was mm. a massive difference across the country yeah. between what you see in London and what you see in other parts of the country, mm. divided by class, divided by money, divided by location. So what we really saw is you may have 95% of people voting remain in East Finchley, mm. but it does not reflect the country, and I think that was the yeah. shock. I yeah. think um, I'm going to have to draw this conversation to an end, but thank you so much for this. And, and, and no doubt, no wonder, uh, your comments uh, are from our viewers. Our viewers have given their comments coming in, and please do keep them coming as well.